All right, welcome everybody. Let's do this. So, uh, question four. Between which of the two values does the equation 3x cubed plus 5x minus 11 equals 0 have a solution? So, that key word, have a solution. So, what does it mean to have a solution? You have to intersect the x-axis. And notice that if you have a continuous function, one of the points has to be above x and one of the point I'm sorry, one of the points have to be above the x-axis and one of the other points has to be below the x-axis. And what does it mean if you're above the x-axis, f of x is greater than zero? Here, if you're below the x-axis, f of x is less than zero. So to solve this question, what you need to do is you need to find Let's look at this one. What is f of negative 2 and what is f of negative 1? What I want you to do is no calculator, no calculator. Plug these in and see what you get, okay? Um, so let's see. If you plug these two in, you get, uh, what did you get? You get negative 45 and negative 19. Now, can there exist a solution between negative 2 and negative 1 if you have these two uh, y values? Pause the video and try and ask yourself that. Right? And if you're coming back, it's no. This does not work because here it's saying that one of the y values has to be positive and the other value has to be negative. Notice that if we have two negative y values, for example, if I have two points that are over here, it doesn't guarantee, it could. It could somehow go from here to here. But you see, it doesn't guarantee it. And that's, so, that's what's so strong about the intermediate value theorem. It guarantees a root if one of them is positive and one of them is negative, okay? And that's what you have to do for this question. You have to see which one gives you a positive and negative uh, y value okay so why don't you pause the video and try and do that okay and if you want to see the actual values so here what is f of 0 f of 1 f of um, 1 f of 2 and what is f of negative 1 and what's f of 0 uh, f of negative 1 was negative 19 this was negative 11 so both of these values are negative so c doesn't work f of 0 is negative 11, f of 1 is negative 3, so both these values are negative, so this one doesn't work. And then it has to be this one because one of them is negative, and look, the other one is positive. So letter D is the correct answer choice, okay? Not too bad. Hopefully this is sinking in a little bit better. Let's look at question 5. So given the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 over 2x minus 5, determine which intervals satisfy the condition of the intermediate value theorem such that f of x equals 0. Okay, so the first question I have for you is, so first question, so this is, I want you to try and answer this. So first question, um, is this continuous? Is this function continuous? for all real numbers, for all real numbers, right? Are you allowed to use for this, for 2x minus 3 over 2x minus 5, are you allowed to use any x value you want in here? And if you can't use an x value, what is it, right? So let's say you pause the video and you try to figure it out. Notice that the denominator can't be 0. So if I have 2x minus 5 equals 0, what is the value of x that when you plug it in, the whole thing is zero? So let's get x by itself, so it's minus five. So what do we do? Plus five, five, mm, I'm sorry, plus five, plus five, so do x equals five. So x is equal to five over two. And what does five over two, what is that equal to? That's equal to 2.5. So notice that this function is a rational function, and I'll explain it more in class. This function is continuous for all real numbers except 2.5. You're not allowed to use 2.5 or 5.2. So let's see over here. Um, which answer choice can we eliminate? 
Um, notice that you can't be, you can't use x equals to 0.5, so you know there's no solution here and no solution here because the function is not continuous between 2 and 3. But the function is continuous between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2. Okay, that for sure is true. So what you need to do is, let's see, let's, let me just write everything down real quick. So f of x is not continuous at x equals 5 over 2. So let's see. Um, now for there to be a root, notice that if I have f of 0 and f of 1, and if I have f of 1 and f of 2, how do you know you get a root? Notice it's the same idea here. One of the points has to be positive and one of the, I'm sorry, one of the f of x values has to be positive and one of the f of x values has to be negative. This has to be true. So let's figure it out. Plug in zero, plug in one, what do you get? Plug in one, plug in two, what do you get? Pause the video, take your time. Okay, let's say you, and remember no calculator. So when you plug in one, I'm sorry, when you plug in zero, you get three over five. When you plug in one, you get one over three. Notice that these two f of x values, they're positive. So this, this will not work. But let's look at this one. This is f of one is, what's f of one? Oh yeah, one over three. And what's f of two? It's negative one. And notice we have one that's positive and one that's negative. Like this point over here, f of one comma one three, that point is somewhere here. Where is this point two negative one? It's, uh, it's two negative one is here. Notice that between these two points, there has to be a root. And that's what this justification is saying by the intermediate value theorem, okay? So the answer is uh, part B. All right, let's take a look at number six. Number six says, apply the intermediate value theorem if possible, Okay, so maybe it's not possible on the interval of 1 to 2 so that f of c equals 9 for the function f of x equals x cubed plus x. So let's see if we can use the intermediate value theorem. So what do we need to do? We need to check. We need to go 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Part 1. Um, is f of x continuous? And f of x is continuous because um, f of x is a polynomial and all polynomials are continuous. So let's see part two. Does f of one not equal f of two? So let's see what's f of one and what's f of two? f of one, take your time and you know plug in one, plug in two, right? Um, pause the video. So let's see, what's f of 1? It should be 2. And what's f of 2? It should be 10. So now, try and do the third condition. Try and take your time. Right? So for the third condition to satisfy, you have to say that f of a is less than f of c, which is less than f of b. Okay? And remember, this anytime you have the interval, this is your a, this is your b, and this is the c, right? Okay, so what is f of a? f of a is f of 1. And what is f of 1? That's 2, okay. What's f of c? f of c is 9. I'm sorry, yeah, let me write f of c again. And that's 9. What's f of b? f of b is, remember, is f of 2. That's, so this is um, f of 2. And that is 10. Now, is this true? Is 9 greater than 2 but less than 10? True. Thus, now, okay, now if you just say true and you left it like this, it's not enough. You have to say thus, or you could say so by IVT, there exists a C such that F of C equals 9. You're not asked to find what is the C value. All you know that there is a C value. There is a value of X 
within this interval that if I plugged it in, it gives me none. Okie dokie. That's why this uh, theorem is it's a very powerful theorem in calculus. All right, let's see. Woo, my energy level. I am, I'm exhausted, but let's continue on. All right, number seven. Uh, a delivery van travels along a straight road during the time interval of um, zero to 30 seconds, and the van's velocity in feet per second is a continuous function. Use the table below to find the minimum number of times that the van must have stopped. Ooh, good question. Justify your answer. Um, okay, you know what? Give me a second. I'm gonna pause and think of a good solution for you guys. I need to think about it. All right, give me a second. The sign changing. So notice that for a car to stop or a van to stop, right? What does your velocity need to be for the van to stop? The, the velocity needs to be zero. So what this is quite asking you, like imagine if these are points, how many times does it hit the x-axis? And it, it's a very good question. So the answer should be at least three times, okay? At least three times. And the idea is, when does it change from positive to negative or negative to positive? It changes here, it changes here, and it changes here. So if you just write this, it's not enough. It's not enough. You have to use IVT. So the idea or the way you would show it is you would say by IVT, V of 7 is less than zero. Okay, so let's look at what I mean by this. You see, if this is seven, this is V of seven. Notice that V of seven, this negative 15 is less than zero, and V of 12 is greater than zero. The second you have something less than zero and then greater than zero, so on seven to 12. From this interval, from seven to 12, the van must have stopped. Uh, let me fix the camera angle a little bit. Okay, that's better, sorry. Um, yeah, so that's true. What I want you to do is try and do the, do the next by yourself. Prove it for these two, okay? So you pause the video and you're trying to do it. So let's see, you wanna check it, it's by IVT. Uh, v of 18 is greater than zero and V of 22 is less than zero. So on 18, from the interval from 18 to 22, okay? Because you see here, this goes from negative, right? This goes negative to positive, and then this one is going positive to negative, okay? And then what's the last one? It should be by IVT. Um, v of 22 is less than zero, and V of 30 is greater than zero. So on 22, from the interval from 22 to 33, the van must have also stopped. Okay, that was a good question. You see, this is why calculus is so nice. All right, last one, y terminamos, we are done. No shout outs today. Should I, who should I give a shout out to? Um, okay, oh yeah, I'll give a shout out. Shout out to Mikhail, Kiefer, and Miss Sydney Frias for doing the homeworks. Woo woo. Okay, uh, part, <laughs> part eight. Explain why the intermediate value theorem does not apply for guaranteeing that a zero exists for the function of x squared plus two x plus five over this interval. Well, okay, let's see why the intermediate value theorem doesn't work. So let's just go through each of them. So we have one, two, and three, All right? So let's see, part one. Is this function, con oops, sorry. Is this function continuous? Yes, continuous. Por qué? Um, porque x squared plus two x plus five is a polynomial. Uh, what about part two? Is, let's see if this is true. Is f of zero not equal to f of six? Maybe they're equal. 
right? Let's see what happens. So what I want you to do is find f of zero and find f of six. Pause the video. Okay, so what is f of zero? It's five. And this is what? 53. Okay. So, so these two are not equal to each other. So these two are okay. But now when we go to this, let's just read the question again. It says, explain why the intermediate value theorem does not apply for guaranteeing that a zero exists. Okay, ah, okay, so why doesn't a, a, why doesn't a zero exist? Because here, notice that both of these values are, po are positive. F of zero is greater than zero, and also F of six is also greater than zero. If you have two points that are above the x-axis, it does not guarantee that it hits the x-axis. It could. It could hit the x-axis, but it doesn't guarantee it. And that's what the intermediate value theorem does. It guarantees it. That if one is above and one is below, then it has to hit. Right? The function could do this, but it's not guaranteed that it will hit it. Okay? And that's for part three. You would say since... Um, <clears throat> what would you say? Um, oh, okay. So notice that f of, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, what's a good justification? So let's say since f of a is less than f of c, which is less than f of b. Ah, okay, I got you. So here, what is f of a? It's 5. Less than, what is f of b? It's 53, right? Now, pause the video and take your time. In this context, it doesn't say it, but what do you think f of c is? Right. And if you pause the video and you see you want to see the solution, f of c is zero. Okay, because f of c is where it hits the x-axis. And where you hit the x-axis, let's say you hit, let's say this is a point. Let's say you're three zero, you hit at three zero. Notice what is that f of x value? It's zero. And that's what you're showing. And notice that zero is not greater than five and less than 53. This is false. So IVT is not guaranteed in this context. All right, class, um, you should put on a big happy face. Uh, I think this was a good lesson and hopefully you're feeling it out, right? I will see you tomorrow. And if you didn't get a chance to check, maybe you're exhausted, but there is a Delta map. If you're exhausted, it's okay. But tomorrow we're also gonna have a mini quiz very short only 10 minutes at the end of the class just so the pressure is on a little bit right let's see if you could do this by yourself